Welcome to you me and Montessori. You are now on the channel of a Montessori broadcaster. Thank you in advance for liking and subscribing. A happy greeting to all our viewers, and a special appreciation to returning subscribers. Grab your coffee. And maybe a biscuit or two. Because now it is going to get interesting. The title of this video is. The Emergence of Man. Remember, we are working through Montessori's famous book, To Educate the Human Potential. We are still examining how to present the universe to the imagination of the elementary student. So, let us get into it. In chapters 6 to 9, Montessori outlines the formation and evolution of the earth from the earliest of times. And she does so in language that is rich and imaginative. Her knowledge of details is impressive, as she traces life on land to its origins, and shows its evolutionary progression. In showing the unfolding of forms of life in the oceans and on Earth, she links it to the geological transformations of the planet, and to its geographical conditions at different periods. Always making connections between developments, she argues that these developments prepared the conditions that made the emergence of people possible. It was the practice in her day, to refer to people in general as man. We will avoid this categorization wherever possible. She stated of the emergence of people as follows, and I quote, Earth greeted her son with joy but offered him toil, no enfeebling ease." End quote. We will now explore Montessori's chapters 10 to 17. And I quote Montessori again. Something new came into the world with man, a psychic energy of life, different from any that had yet been expressed. End quote. She starts with the earliest inventions typical of humans, for example, primitive tools and artistic creations. Humanity's greatest contribution to the cosmic plan, is our intelligence with which we have conquered the world. The agricultural revolution gave humanity the opportunity, to settle in one place and build massive civilizations. Food scarcity became replaced with food security. In chapter 11 she details the struggles between nomads and settlers and shows how the eventual mixing of both groups, reinvigorated human civilization, in an upward trajectory, despite the means having generally been bloody war. In chapters 13 to 17, she details the directions of huge human migrations and the journeys of the most famous ancient civilizations. Her narrative shows how the torch of civilization has been handed from one to the next, normally through warfare. The advanced Asiatic civilization predated those of the Europeans and Egyptians. She comes up with a remarkable opinion, which is generally regarded as a myth, but currently getting more and more traction. Namely that the ancient civilizations of Europe and Egypt had been joined by advanced people from a continent that had been lost to the ocean. Yes, Atlantis. Members from this lost civilization moved into Europe and Egypt as well as Asia, helping to build their first civilizations. This Atlantean culture long survived in Peru and Egypt as well as in many parts of Asia. Her historical survey of ancient civilizations starts from India, then China, Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Persians, Greeks, and the Roman Empire. She writes knowledgeably of ancient leaders such as Darius, Cyrus, Alexander the Great, and Julius Caesar and thinkers such as the Indian sages, the Buddha, Confucius, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. She always sees the connections between developments and shows the progression of human civilization through the rise and fall of these civilizations. Montessori likens the development of human civilization to the natural organization of biological life. The biological body, she emphasizes, can only work if all its parts cooperate. And I quote, Humanity too is an organic unity that is still being born. Like organs the different centers of civilization have been nursed to strengthen in isolation, then brought into contact by which they merged into larger organizations. Cruelties and exploitations, wars and all forms of violence have had to play their part, because men have not yet realized their common humanity and its work in fulfillment of a cosmic destiny. She sees in the future, a unified humanity, much like a single organic body. She had the fullest confidence that humanity will achieve this ultimate and innate objective. Why did Montessori so vividly and imaginatively narrate the story of the evolution of Earth and of life on it? To reveal to us what to teach the elementary child, and fire up the teachers so that they can be enthralled by this tremendous tale of beauty and awe. How else will they be able to grab the imagination of the child if theirs is dulled? And so, we have come to the end of the ninth video in our series on Montessori's famous book, To Educate the Human Potential. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and hit the like button. It helps us to promote our channel. Your opinions are important to us. So, let us know what you think of this video by passing us a comment if you wish. And, thank you very much.